Praise to the Lord and just bless him. Worship, 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 worship. Lady, your family, you are about to become a peace setter. You are about to become a record breaker. Please take take care of her. Take care of her. Take care of her. You are about to become a record breaker. Amen. The Lord says I should lift up the covering on your head. Amen. The covering on your life is lifted. Amen. Wherever you are, take the prophecy. Amen. Take the prophecy. Amen. Take the prophecy. Amen. In the name of Jesus. What has not been done before your family, you will do it. In Jesus, take your seat one minute, please. I want to do this in 30 minutes. Let me see how I'll be done. Open your ears well because, in the midst of the message, your case will be announced. Please, let's run so we can be out of here in no time. John chapter 5. If you have your Bible with you, South Africans come to church a lot with iPads. The Bible says, Search the scripture, not punch the scripture. John chapter 5. I'm joking. John 5. We'll read from verse 5 to verse 9. What we're going to do, when I read 5, you read 6. When I read 7, you read 8. When we get to 9, we'll read it together. After the count of 2. Are you ready? John chapter 5. John is very close to Exodus. If you look for it from there, before we close, you will see it. I'll read verse 5 and you read verse 6. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. One to go. The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another stepped down before me. Let's do this nine together. One to go. Immediately the man was made whole, took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. I want to share briefly on the gift of a man. Somebody say the gift of a man. Say that loud and clear. Say the gift of a man. Say it one more time. One more time. Now when i say the gift of a man i'm not talking about a man that is gifted i'm talking about god introducing a man to your life as a gift the place where we read the bible says and jesus saw a man that was by the pool jesus saw him and knew that he had been there for a long time. The problem that Jesus saw was not his condition. It was his duration. Challenges are normal. Challenges are normal to destinies. Enemies are normal to a great future. As a matter of fact, your eminence is revealed by your eminence. Your eminence is revealed by your enemies. When you have a great destiny, you will see great confrontation. So when Jesus saw the man, Jesus knew he has been there for a long time. And Jesus asked him, will thou be made whole? In other words, why have you been here for too long? The man said, I have no man my problem is not the sickness my problem is not the challenge my problem is not the confrontation my problem is i have no man sir every great man is a function of a connection to another man when god wants to reward your service he does that through men luke chapter 6 verse 38 Give, it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Shall God cause man, man, to give to your bosom? Am I speaking to somebody here? God cause man to give to your bosom. When Peter was frustrated and Peter was stranded, the Bible says Jesus walked into his life and gave him an instant turnaround. And when he had that turnaround, the Bible says his net began to break. Child of God, 
the last time i checked net is made of leather net is made from a piece of cloth so net should not break net should tear you didn't get that but the bible said the net began to break the right word should have been the net began to what tear what that scripture means that net had so much fishes that it began to break records the net broke record it carried 150 fishes it hadn't happened before can i release a, a, a net breaking miracle someone here i need feedback please i need feedback someone under the sound of my voice what has not happened in your family is about to happen to you hey take your seat a man sir <laughs> Every family, every lo location, every locality needs a man. The Bible says in the book of Luke, hear me, Luke 15, the Bible says that a, a, a certain man had a hundred sheep. And one of the sheep strayed away. He abandoned 99 and went for one. When I saw that scripture, I was angry. I see I have 99 sheep. What's my business with one stubborn sheep that is, that is careless? He abandoned 99 and went for that one sheep. Looked for it. Treated it. Carried it on his shoulder. Came home and was celebrating. What is your problem? You have 99. I said, Lord, why did he do that? The Bible says he carried the sheep on his shoulder. Don't forget the Bible says the government shall be upon the shoulder the shoulder speaks of leadership so that one sheep was the leader of the 99 other sheep if the leader is affected the sheep will scatter the shepherd knew that even when i'm not around i can walk away and i'm sure that this sheep will take care of the 99 listen there are some of you in your family you are the one god has raised up to be the sheep to control the 99 you are the one god has raised up to be the sheep to make an impact in your family line and this is where i prophesy as you hear me and hear the sound of my voice i speak to your life i speak for your family with this mouth i used to pray after today your man shall appear i say your man shall appear your man shall appear your man shall appear take your seat <laughs> the bible says the man said why while the water is troubled before i step in another takes my place because i have no man number one when you lack a man you will be cheated in life when you lack the right voice to speak for you you will be cheated in life he said another takes my place you will be cheated number two the bible says he has been there for 38 years without a man you will wait till you waste he says he's been there for 38 years without the right man in your life sir can i surprise you stop this balance this cliche when people say future is bright no future is bright no future is bright it is the illumination you take from your today into your future that lightens your future every future is blank is blank no future is bright it is the light you carry from today into your future that determines the brightness of your future no future is bright every future is blank the illumination you draw the light you contact god is about to bring the right people there are so many of you now people have, people people have overtaken you people are ahead of you because you lack the right people to give you speed don't be in competition listen don't be in competition with a man who has a helper I said something in our church some time back. 
I said, this life is a rat race. Don't be in a hurry. Because even if you win the race, you are still a rat. Never compete with a man who has a helper. You will break your legs. And this person is walking with speed. Am I talking to somebody here? The president of America. The year he won an election. The month of October. Before he won the election, sir. The month of August. Before he won the election. That month, $36 million was spent on adverts. He only spent $3,000. The president of America did spend up to one million of his own money. The only time he gave a million was when he was giving to veterans. Lifted up the chair. He didn't spend nothing. People put him there. No matter the nonsense he's talking, people like him. You didn't hear what I said? Dislike the man. People are talking about his tweets every day. When he wants to change the rhetoric, he just releases a tweet. And that becomes the focus of the media. He abuses people at will. Can I tell you something? When... <laughs> In my country, when you want to make suit, I don't know if they do it here, you get a tailor. See, stand straight. <laughs> After a while, you grow, you start buying what they call designer suits. Then they just order for it from Italy, from Turkey, and all of that. But you grow to a level, designer suits, anybody can have a size and you wait. But you grow to a level that is what they call customized suit. It's only made for you. You don't see it on somebody else. This is it. When God says, I will give man a help made for him, he was saying, I will give him a customized helper. You hear me? When God brings a customized helper, even in your error, they stay with you. No matter how imperfect you appear, when God brings a customized helper to your life, the customized helper stay with you. Child of God, 38 years by the pool, because no man, when you lack the right man in your life, time flies. When you lack the right man in your life, time is wasted. When you lack the right man in your life, there is somebody who has a vision. There is somebody who has a project. There is someone who has a prospect. All you need for it to come to pass is the right man to be introduced to you. Wherever you are, as you hear the sound of my voice, your man will appear. Number one. How do I get my man? The Bible said there was a certain man by the pool. Somebody shout definition. definition. Say definition. definition. Certain man by the pool. You can't get a helper until you discover who you are. If you discover yourself, you uncover your helpers. Now, there are so many of you who have dreams and projects, but they are too scattered to get attention. Someone walks into your life now and says, what will you do with two million rands? You will, you will faint. First you will faint. Because your vision is myopic. Not doing 200 million rands can't do nothing. But you will faint. We need to get a doctor to revive you. But a man of dream, currency loses value. Am I talking to somebody here? Chorus. Why? Because you have defined yourself. The devil doesn't attack nobody's. Favor also doesn't come on nobody's. Samson saw a woman he wanted to marry. And he said to his father and his mother, I have seen a daughter of the Philistine that pleases me well. On 
his way for introduction a lion came the lion did not come after the mother the lion did come after the father the lion came after Samson because Samson was a carrier of destiny sir if you are a carrier of destiny attacks may come but the attacks are for your promotion am I talking to somebody here in Acts chapter 12 verse 1 the Bible says and Herod stretched his hand and killed James and the Lord brought out Peter from prison and Peter got to the door and knocked and a lady by the name of Rhoda came to the door asked who is that he said my name is Peter she said Peter Peter she ran back and she never opened the door the Bible says she knew Peter's voice she ran back there are many rodas around they have the means to help you they are close to helping you they know your pain but they turn back it was someone else that opened that door for Peter but this is it the Bible says, and Peter came out and said to the brethren he said I'm going to minister go and tell James what you saw I thought James died I thought James died go and tell James and the brethren James and before James died he duplicated himself okay let me show you something let me show you something let me show you something <laughs> in Joshua chapter 1 the Bible says now Joshua 1 1 now Moses was dead and God said to Joshua arise eh? Moses my servant is dead Judges 1 when Joshua died the people cry to God who shall go for us <laughs> Moses died God said Joshua died the people asked God you didn't get something yes, in the time of Moses the people were not introduced to God in the time of Joshua he led them so close to God that they could talk to God by themselves now watch this the greatest access the greatest discovery in life is self-discovery number two i'm in a hurry number two the bible said jesus saw the man <laughs> he said take your bed take your bed and go if your man must be released you must understand the place of activity you have to be active let me show you something in matthew chapter 11 the bible says john said to servant he said go and ask jesus are you the one to come or should we expect another why did john say that john was arrested john was incapacitated john was in prison and john was expecting jesus to come and get him out john was behind bars john was expecting jesus to get him out and jesus was expecting John to come out I'll show you Jesus was expecting John knowing the capacity John carried he was expecting John to come out so when those two people came to Jesus and said are you the one or should we expect another Jesus said go and show John what you see the blind see the lame walk the dead are raised he said blessed is he that is not offended in me as they turn to go Jesus asked the people who did you go to see a reed shaking by the wind he said of all born of women there's none greater than john oh john was greater than abraham john was greater than isaac john was greater than enoch yet enoch did not die yet john was arrested john was greater than elijah who commanded fire at will yet john was incapacitated john of all 
son of human in other words jesus was saying i expected john to walk out of prison john is waiting for me and i am waiting for him sir there are so many of us we are waiting for god to do something and god is waiting for us to do something if you read matthew 11 jesus began to mourn john in his lifetime john was still alive jesus mourned him the next chapter chapter 12 he said was cut off why because john did not understand the place of activity god will give you a miracle but it's your duty to take it god will give you a breakthrough but it's your duty to take it science says newton's law that all object assumes a state of rest until an external force is applied sir a miracle has been released a breakthrough has been released but you need to activate it tell somebody activate say it again say it again say it again say it again the spiritual controls the physical mark chapter 8 jesus sees a man from bethsaida and he took the man out of the town you know the story laid hands on him and the man said i see men as trees right he said jesus laid hands on him again the second time and he began to see properly so the man received the second touch no no infirmity no disease needs to touch from jesus just one what happened was this jesus touched the man and said what do you see the man said i see men as trees jesus opened his eye first to show him the root of his problem the men around him were the trees in his life Say, this is the root of your problem. The man around you initiated this blindness. Now you've seen the root of your problem. Look up. The guy was already seen. He said, now look up. He looked up. He touched his eyes. He said, now I see men as men. In other words, I see the real identity. The one carrying Bible, but yet coming from his Sangoma's house. I see him. The one that smiles at me, but is behind my pain. I see him. I was preaching in church one Sunday. I walked to a lady. I never knew she was a very rich woman. Our church is so funny. The way we run our church is very funny. We don't know who is rich or who is poor. Everybody sits the same place. It's, it's very funny. I don't even know he's a millionaire in our church. I don't know. I have no idea. I relate with everybody the same. I have no, and that's the truth. I have no idea who is rich or who is poor. I relate with everybody the same. Now, I walked to her. I said, woman, the Lord said you should change your driver. She looked at me. She was bringing documents. I said, no, the problem is your driver. He said, no, sir. I'm being old. They are owing me. They are, uh, talk about the, the, money. the money I said no your driver when the service ended she told a member of the church and said your pastor didn't prophesy well I came here because of my money and the person came to tell me he said daddy a woman said you spoke to her about our driver but that's not our problem our problem is our money I said I don't know her I said what God told me two weeks later a driver killed her sliced a body and put it in the refrigerator so what god was saying that day was there is death coming avoid it there is a pain coming avoid it. there is a confrontation coming avoid it sir many of us blessings have been released opportunities have been released but we need to activate it sir there are certain breakthroughs that cannot come your way on, unless there is blood on the altar. There are certain opportunities that will never be open to you unless there is blood on this altar. He said to Jacob, to 
by Esau. Get me venison such as I love. Jacob had no problem bothering himself, swindling Esau. Because Esau did not know how to cook. Even if he had killed the animal, he can't cook. Jacob was the cook. You forgot to give him porridge? And there's something about sacrifice. You build your seed. If you can't give porridge, you can't give anything. You build your seed. There is an unction. I was preaching someone. A lady ran to me. A young man rather. Ran to me and held my shoes. He said, I tap. I tap. I tap. The anointing. I said, my friend, get out of here. Anointing is on palm wine. What are you tapping? You are tapping wine from my shoe. You don't tap the anointing like that. There is a price to pay. So I said, there is a price to pay. There is, there is something to be activated. Jesus stood with the man. Take your bed. Every divine visitation has a human reaction. Take your bed. There are people that can never get married until they activate it. There are people that can't get pregnant until they activate it. There are people whose doors can't be opened until they activate it. Let there be no gain saying about this matter while the earth remained. See time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night cannot see. How come pastors are the poorest? Pastors. Why? Because they have made themselves Melchizedek. Always collecting. Where is my tithe? Where is my seed? You collect it and eat up your destiny. Where is my seed? Where is my tithe? We collect and waste life. So many of us are incapacitated on the journey of life because we don't understand the place of activity. There is a place to activate an unction that you desire. There is a place. One time, Pastor Benny Hinn was in Nigeria. He came to Nigeria and I was in a hotel and he says, Benny is on the next floor. I said, which Benny Hinn? This hotel. I, said, yes, yeah. I will spend at least 10 minutes with him. He said, 10 minutes. You have an appointment? I said, I don't need an appointment. I know how to get an appointment. I withdrew some dollars in capital letters. I withdrew dollars in capital letters. I mean, heavy. And I held it. I was going to his floor. I saw some non-givers trying to stop me. And, and, and they said, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, you look like apostle. I said, yeah, where, where, where are you? I said, can I see Pastor Ben? He said, no, 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 no. He said, he said, he said. <laughs> I said, if you know what I carry, <laughs> you, will, you will call him. <laughs> and he said, no, no, no. And I said, I have a seat for him. He said, it doesn't matter. And I mentioned it. He said, eh? He said, sorry. C can you come in? Can you come in? I walked in. And I saw him and I sat with him and I said, this is what I have. I'm just giving you this to appreciate you for your longevity over 45 years of ministry and to connect to that grace. I've been preaching for 29 years. To connect to that grace, almost 50. Yeah, almost 50 years of preaching. I want to connect to that grace. And say, okay. And I mentioned the amount. He said, what? Where did you get it from? I said, do you need some more? <laughs> Sir, as I turned something fell on me from that day we began to jam stadiums we began to jam stadiums around african countries around europe we began to jam stadiums we do program what is my son from america is here we do program in america monday tuesday monday morning it doesn't happen in the u.s monday morning and the place is packed sir not because of anything i'm saying because I activated something. Am I communicating here? Am I communicating? Even in the occult world, not everybody occultic is rich. There are some occultic poor men. Only those who take risk are rich. Oh, you are not following me. Even in the occult world, only those who take risk you hear somebody gives out his mother eh? somebody gives out his leg somebody gives out his arm
somebody gives out something but in church I told our members in church I say I don't know what to do to you I said because terrorists will take a man three months they will radicalize him ISIS will take a man a young student in America load some things on the media three months the student will walk out of his father's house looking for where to die they radicalize them and they are ready to sacrifice their life you, you have been in church five years we will preach bible study we will preach prayer meeting we will preach sunday service that is how you sit down like mount zion that cannot be moved there is nothing we say that touch you in fact before we finish quoting somewhere in the bible you finish quoting it for us like a jehovah's witness you you know more than everybody and you are still the same what are they telling them that we are not telling you and somebody is ready to die what are they telling them that we are not telling you in the church there are people who are stranded in life today because they are waiting for God to do something and God is waiting for them to do something strange doors are about to open Amen. the great man called Richard Branson is the owner of Virgin Atlantic. Richard Branson, <laughs> this thing works, took a volume of money, went to Warren Buffett, and dropped it with him. He's not a born again Christian. Dropped it with Warren Buffett, and Warren Buffett shook his hand and said, You go far. Turned to go. And the idea came. In Phoenix, Arizona, gathered people together on how to make a jet that will go to the moon. So when, when you are doing honeymoon, you do it in the moon proper. I read something, I read something the guy said recently, and I said, This guy is crazy. That is thinking and putting things together on how to build the first five-star hotel in the moon. So I asked myself, who will be the bricklayers? <laughs> How to get a jet that goes to the moon and the economy ticket is $195,000. 195000 US dollars to buy a ticket to go to the moon. So you go and die. <laughs> because, I mean, if I'm going to buy a ticket for one ninety-five thousand dollar, you must you must take me to see God. <laughs> I'm I'm going there to see God. But someone practice the covenant of activity. I am here to raise up someone who, after the I I I had what God told me when I was praying. I said, Lord, what do I tell them? He said, Tell them tonight. Let somebody activate a helper. Let somebody activate a a a, a gift of a man. Let somebody activate greatness in this direction let somebody activate open doors around let somebody activate supernatural lifting let somebody activate supernatural encounter let somebody activate an uncommon dimension of grace i was in south africa here this in pretoria many years ago i was preaching in a small hall upstairs i was preaching and there was a boy he didn't come with a Bible. He didn't come with a Bible. And I'll preach to a point. He will stand up. Kelebos! He will sit. It was very annoying because he was not writing. I'll say a few things. Kelebos! He will sit. I was getting a little bit offended because he was distracting the service. People were laughing. Some were just laughing. Some ignored him. When I say something, he will stand. Kelebos! He will sit. So I was a little bit angry. I said, if, if they can just take this guy out of this place, I will say something, he will stand again. Tell him us. He will sit. The next day, he did that. I was walking through the crowd and I said to him, The Lord said, You should sow all you have with you. He said, Pardon? I walked away. <laughs> The guy came out, knelt down by the altar, 
all he had with him in this world was in his pocket. So he brought it out, knelt by the altar. He went back and sat down and did not respond. No matter what I said, he never responded. He didn't say a word and he frowned. I noticed he was looking at me suspiciously. Yeah. But I've heard from the Lord and I wasn't worried. He was looking at me like that. But I, I noticed people around him started missing his reaction. You know, Kelebo. So they were missing. Nine months later, I returned to South Africa. The pastor then, we had a the pastor then, he came to the airport to pick me. And there was a car they brought to the airport. I didn't know where the door was. I mean, doors are by the side, but this door was behind and in front. It opened like that. I went backward. So the blood of Jesus. <laughs> and I saw a young man came out looking big. He looked like we had two or three are gathered. <laughs> and I looked at him. I said, how are you? He said, fine, sir. You don't know me? I said, I can't remember. So I told the, the pastor, how do I go into the car? So he said, Papa, hold on. you can't remember me? I said, no. And he raised his leg. I said, wait, wait, wait. Are you who I think you are? He said, sir, it is me. Tell me your story. He said, sir, I gave that seed as I walked out. He said, my friends told me I was stupid. They said all kinds of stuff. Nine days later, I met an Indian man in South Africa who connected me he was talking millions as at this time in dollars and it was like my protocol throughout the meeting he took me to the service he brought me back he took me in the evening he brought me back he took me the next day and he started frowning i said why are you frowning he said you didn't call for seed i said i'm not led he said be led <laughs> he said be led because the last time i did that look at me today he said so be led for me for me if you are not led for anyone be led for me he said because i have projects and containers that are kept and i kept a battle seat to activate them i said just pray for god to talk to me he said god is talking to you through me to me <laughs> sir can i prophesy on somebody here in the next 21 days those that knew you before will not recognize you again in the next 21 days by the power of activity those that knew your family line those that knew where you come from by reason of the breakthrough coming they will not identify you anymore those that knew you before by reason of the emancipation coming they can't recognize you anymore there is an open door coming for somebody here there's a breakthrough coming for somebody here an opportunity coming for somebody here a lifting coming for somebody here i say it's coming for somebody here your doors are opening on the right opening on the left opening in front i see doors opening around you 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 the man to lift you I like what Paul said he said a man appeared to me and said come to Macedonia and help us a man appeared to me and said come up to Macedonia and help us for you to go up your man must appear the man that needs to appear for you to be lifted may that man appear may that man appear Amen. May that man appear. 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 Hear me. Let me tell you how I handled the first millions in my entire life i went somewhere someone was ministering and the holy ghost said to me 
give all you have. I don't like the word empty my account. Because some people say they emptied their account. Ask them what they emptied. There was practically nothing there. And I went to the bank. We drew all I had. And I dropped on the altar. While I was going back, the devil began to talk to me. He said, John, saying, how stupid you are. You give everything you have to a man. No, that's how we say it. Because the devil wants the church to go back to the poverty age. So they have fired missiles into the social media. To make people, people's mind corrupted. Thinking they are giving to men, not to God. South Africa, there's nothing you can give me. Are you aware of that? Yes, sir. If I tell you I'm not rich, I'm not being fair to you. If I tell you I'm not rich, I'm not being fair. God has blessed me beyond my dreams. There is nothing I am looking for. And I'm honest about it. It's not pride. It's not arrogance. When I tell you things like I tell you what I do. After I gave that seed, while I was going home, I was thinking. I had a piece of land. I didn't know the size. It was sizeless. It was not a plot. It was not half a plot. It was just a land. The land was so small that we could not change the papers. There was nothing to write. I mean, when you... Is it a plot you call it here? A plot? 50 by 100. Is it a plot? Okay. There was no measurement to that land because it was too small. Very tiny. The man who gave me the land was just in a happy mood. He said, Apostle, I'm giving you the land from here to here. <laughs> That's, how I, <laughs> That's how I measured it. From here to here. See, this is your land. He put a bucket. So there was nothing to do. <laughs> I mean, this I met with his leg. He just measured it. Put a bucket. So I forgot about the land. I was just going on my own. And they called me. They said, a known man in the city where I was living had bought the land and needed that small piece of land to complete the land he bought. He said they should call me. And I entered his house. A billionaire. And he said, Apostle, is that your land? I said, yes, sir. He said, how much do I give you? <laughs> I started laughing. <laughs> he said, that kind of land, you don't buy it. <laughs> In my heart. I said, that's not a land you buy. It's a land you take. <laughs> he said, tell me how much to give you. I was laughing. He said, why are you laughing? You think I can't pay? I said, sir, no. <laughs> uh, he called somebody. He said, come, give Apostle three million. I fell on the chair. I stood up. I said, what did he say? I, I mean, this was, yes, 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 he go. I said, what did he say? He said, three million. I said, wait. <laughs> Are you sure he knows the size of the land? He said, he does. Is it not that small? He said, he needs it. It's very important. I said, okay. I had some brothers in my house, some Christian brothers in my house. And I don't trust them. They brought the money to me, cash. And he said, how are you going? It's getting dark. I said, I don't know. He said, I'll give you a driver and a car and a security man. I said, no problem. We got to the car. The driver said, where are you going? I said, just keep going. <laughs> he said, where are you going? I said, anywhere except my house. <laughs> I have some brothers there. If they see this money, I'm in trouble. Anywhere. Sir! He took me somewhere. I sat with a pastor. I was screaming. I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I heard the voice of God. Give out the seed. You say what? The Lord said, give out the seed. I cried. I rebuked. And I gave out the seed. That was the beginning of my greatness. That was how my life turned. No matter the blessing a prophet carries, it has to be activated. Yes, sir. No matter the unction in the meeting, the promise of God on your life, the expectations of your heart, 
it has to be activated. I want to pray for you today. 